Hello YouTube, uh, MirrorWitch13 here. I'm just going to upload a very informal video uh, discussing certain subjects that you all might find interesting. I know I certainly do. Um, one of the subjects uh, that I feel is very pertinent to my YouTube channel is the subject of what happens after death. Now, there are many different theories as to what happens after death but most of them seem to follow a very similar strain. Um, you can research near-death experiences and a lot of them are very similar. Um, there are differences in some aspects or others but there's always a tunnel with light at the end or darkness. Um, there's always this calm that comes over the individual if they feel that they are going to a positive place. But there are stories of individuals who felt that they were going to a negative place. Now, I would go so far as to venture that I, if you were to ask me if I believe in heaven, I would definitely say that there is a, a state of existence that is higher consciousness where we are all connected to the higher consciousness, that we have all access to all knowledge, all good things, all love, the very source of love, and it's in that state of being that we dwell if we either reach higher consciousness while still in the physical form, or if we pass on to the next world and we reach it then. Now, do I believe in hell? Um, yes, I believe that there is a negative polar opposite to this positive existence, this positive state of being. But I don't believe it is depicted, it, it, I don't believe that it is as the Bible had depicted, or as people claim the Bible depicts it. The Bible, trans, the biblical translation itself is very much, as in regards to hell, it's very similar to the rest of the translation, which is so ancient that we are sometimes having a difficult time understanding what it meant. But anyway, um, I was I was meditating about this um, for the past few years and I've reached a peace and a conclusion in my mind and heart that you don't necessarily have to agree with but I believe that it is an accurate depiction of what happens after death. I believe in hell, but I don't believe hell is an actual place. Like a positive state of being, of reaching higher consciousness, and being connected to the source of love and connected to all good things, there is also a negative state of being, where you are disconnected to all good things. Um, I don't believe you have to be dead to actually be in hell. Ask anyone with a very serious mental illness and they will tell you that they struggle on a daily basis. Um, ask anyone with a tortured mind and they will explain to you that they are living in hell. Um, I believe that hell is a state of mind and depending on what state of mind you're in when you pass, that is the state of mind that you enter initially when you are dead, when you pass. Um, I don't believe that only bad people end up in this negative place. I believe that good people can end up in a negative place. If they are killed or something traumatic has happened to them in a sense that has been so negative and had such an impact that they can't let go of it in that moment and they are forced to hold on to the negative, the negativity of it. Um, I think that happens quite a bit to anyone who has had a traumatic death or who has had a traumatic life. And I think that there are people in this world, ask any addiction treatment center, who are so locked in a series of psychological um, behaviors 
that they are almost like ghosts doomed to repeat the same routine over and over again. Um, this is a very human trait, it's a very spiritual trait, and I believe the same psychological loops that we can get caught into while we're alive are the same psychological loops that we can get caught into once we pass. Now, I remember hearing a near-death experience of a pastor who said that there are angels standing at the gates of hell calling for all of the lost souls to come and exit the gates of hell. And at any moment, if they just reach that moment of self-awareness saying, this is bad for me, I don't want to be here, this is, this is harming me, they have the power to leave at any time. It's just like any other type of human habit, we tend to not own up to our own ability to uh, overcome it and we tend to repeat the same mistakes. When you talk to someone who is an alcoholic or a drug addict, they, you might actually look at them and say, why don't you just stop? Why don't you stop doing the drugs? Why don't you stop drinking? And they'll tell you, no, 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 I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. But it is in their power to stop. It's up here. And then, of course, the more they allow it to happen, the more it becomes a part of their physicality, and then it gets even harder to stop because on top of the psychological lock that they have repeating that behavior over and over again, they have the physical addiction where they enter withdrawal and everything like that. To me, that is hell on earth. And I believe that a spirit can be locked into the same type of negativity. As far as hauntings go, I do believe that there are entities that are locked in their whatever state of mind that left the most impression to them at the time of their death. But also that there are energetic imprints left behind that aren't entities in, the, in and of themselves. They call them residuals that are just images of something that happened in that room. And if you reach a level of psychic awareness where you can actually pick these frequencies up, you can go into a room and say, I, I see a woman sitting in a corner and she's rocking a baby. She used to sing her baby, sing her baby to sleep in this room. The woman, the spirit of the woman isn't necessarily there, nor is the baby, but you're seeing a residual of an energy imprint that was important time in their lives so much that their minds released a frequency to basically imprint their surroundings on an energetic level and leave that image there for sensitives to later find. And that's actually quite nice. Um, if, you, if you can get this skill, it's, it's like you get to see a live movie of something someone did. Um, as I learned how to do this, I would go into an antique shop and I'd close my eyes and I'd, I'd touch a chair and I would see an old woman sitting on the chair stroking her cat. And my mother also has this gift where she opened a jewelry box and suddenly this, she saw this southern woman with blonde hair and she just saw what she looked like in her mind's eye. That's another type of fun haunting that are generally harmless. I mean, of course, there are negative imprints that are left behind, and if you are sensitive and faint of heart, you know, you might see something you don't necessarily want to see. But I would highly suggest working towards getting to that psychic level because it's very informative and it's, it's very interesting. Okay, now, um, touching back on heaven and hell, there was an interesting question that I read online recently where a young man asked what do ghosts see? When he asked what do ghosts see, I, that that was an interesting question. If you were to have a conversation with a ghost right now and tell and ask them please, to des please describe your environment. What, what's in front of you? What do you see? What would they tell you? My answer to that would be, they would probably give you, it, you'd have to see it on a case-by-case -case basis. 
if that entity was locked in a negative state of existence, they don't see very much. There's no eyes to actually see, so it's more just the MEI pictures that are left behind. Um, I'm sorry if I'm, I'm using terms that you're not familiar with, but look that up, that actually exists. Um, there, you'll see the images, you know, but in a negative state, I believe that entities don't see anything but darkness. There's nothing but darkness. They sense things, like they sense the presences of other entities, the living in their space. And in their mind, if they have a mind, it's more like their consciousness, they are replaying certain thoughts that are very simplistic. A psychic once described it um, in another chat room as they have maybe one or two simple sentences that are replaying over and over in their, their mind and they're so fixated in that moment that they're not aware of their surroundings. And it doesn't matter anyway because there's nothing to see. It's just plain darkness. And if they're in an anguished state, even, even less information is available to them as far as what does the ground look like? Are you, are you standing on grass? Are you standing on stone? They wouldn't be able to tell you because that phrase is so ingro ingrained in their mind. Now, if an entity is guided by a psychic to be more aware of their surroundings, the this is just coming to me now, the images of the state of their mind, the state of their consciousness in the moment they got locked will become clearer. So instead of just darkness and vague sounds and impressions, they'll actually see their living room, they will see their office they will see the environment that it that is their conscious mind very much like the movie um inception when they had a mental projection of what exists i say mental but it's more spiritual than mental but that's besides the point this is all very abstract vague and difficult to prove now in the spirit world or is another film that I that I very much love uh, calls it the further. It's from Insidious. There's darkness, and then there's light. And depending on your state of being, things become clearer. Things become more bright. More illuminated so your awareness is lifted to a place where you can actually see where you are once you're in the full light you're no longer in a negative state you have now entered into the territory that some may call heaven or nirvana or what have you um, you've you've connected you've reached the light you've come to the light and goodness knows what you see there I mean, it might be a complete repl replica of your hometown, just brighter and sunnier and void of all negativity. It could be a fantasy world. You know, it could be the wood between the worlds, like um, in Chronicles of Narnia. Uh, call it whatever you wish, but it, it is a positive state of being. The funny thing is that hell is not a, s a place. Heaven is not a place. It is a state of being. And as a being or an entity, you are constantly in the state that you are in. When you're in the physical world, you can be happy and not think about the fact that you're happy because you're hungry or you have to go to the bathroom or, oh, you know, I've got to walk the dog now or, you know, stuff like that. In that spirit state, there is no other pressing engagement to distract you there's no physicality there's no anything so you are alone with your consciousness until you decide to connect to the higher consciousness once you connect to the higher consciousness that's when you connect with all of your loved ones when you find that they had never left you from the from the moment if they had departed prior to you you're still connected with even the ones still in the living world. You can still guide, like, try to s communicate with them, reach a positive, you know, interaction with them. But 
it's all a matter of the state of mind you are in when you are passing. And yeah, the idea of a judge sitting on a throne and saying, you go to heaven, you go to hell, actually sounds less daunting to me than myself being responsible for my own eternity. And in a moment it could change at any, mo at any, at any time. If I choose to go into the negative realms of the spirit world, I could go there and I could be lost for eternity. Or I could go there and be lost for a day. Or I could go there, decide not to stay there, and leave. But really the control is up to you. Which, the more you think about it, the harder a lesson that is. You are your own jailer. You can set your free at yourself free at any moment. The power is you the power is yours. <laughs> so that is that is the part one of the spirit world video. Hope you enjoy.